and so he can get out of here and not have to watch all of us. <laughs> then we'll go on with the minutes and all of the other stuff that we normally do. Uh, Scott, you promised us what ten minutes? I will do my best to do ten minutes. All right. Yeah, well, we won't be we'll, we won't be grumpy and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Scott Pringle with WSP. I'm the consultant project manager for the regional transit feasibility or for the regional transit project. Um, it is uh, a two-year effort, and we're looking at the environmental and design elements of this concept. That is an outcropping of the prior two years worth of work, which was the Regional Transit Feasibility Plan. So I do have a quick video. It kind of gives you a flavor of some of the things that we're talking about with the project. It just gives you a really nice overview of uh, you know, some of the things we're considering. a good example of what we're talking about. We're really talking about bus rapid transit that's operating in the interstate. That's why we've named it Regional Rapid Transit. And the corridor here is the 41-mile corridor that goes all the way from downtown St. Pete through Gateway, West Shore, Tampa, USF, and up to Wesley Chapel. And this is just an artist rendering of some of the uh, concepts that we're looking at. So looking at really using and updating our, our interstate environment to make it truly multimodal, make it available for public transit. As I mentioned before, we're really focused on is looking at you know modern mobility, looking at bus rapid transit in the interstate envelope along the I-275 corridor. But we're talking about modern mobility that's available all day. It's quick. It's efficient. It's safe. It's reliable. We were talking about you know you know early in the morning to late evening service that's coming at the bare minimum every 10 minutes or so. So we're talking about a very premium service connecting that 41 mile uh, portion of our of our region. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of things that I'm talking about and showing you today is building upon that prior two-year study. So we did a prior two-year study, which is called the Regional Transit Feasibility Plan, which came out with this concept as being something that T. Barnett really wanted to prioritize and focus on. This is the schedule. Uh, we have uh, five milestones, really, uh, taking a step at what came out of the planning study and, uh, and retooling that, basically addressing some comments that we had gotten during the two-year study, uh, getting into some conceptual design, doing our environmental, getting to about 30% design so we can go to FTA and go to the federal government with a grant application <coughs> and hopefully get some federal funding to build the project. Um, so you can see here, you know, coming out of the planning study, we had two primary questions from the, from the from the region, from the community, which is where are the station areas and how much of this corridor is going to be dedicated or how much of it's going to be, you know, mixed with other traffic in the interstate. So when we developed the concept for the prior planning study, we had over 21 stations along the 41-mile corridor more stations than what we needed. So one of the first things we did is we met with all these different folks, folks from the business community, folks from land use staff, um, and a number of different stakeholders, and started on that 21 stations and started prioritizing, okay, what are the stations we really need to move forward with into design? What we landed on are these 13 stations. So you can see uh, um, the starting at the top, we're looking at a station in State Route 54, Wesley Chapel, Pasco, 56, following that, Bears, Fowler essentially, we're calling USF area, so we want that connection to the university. Uh, Waters, Bird, that's near the old dog track. 
Uh, somewhere in Seminole Heights, we're still trying to identify exactly where that is, and that's why that circle is not really a circle. Uh, downtown Tampa, Himes Avenue, West Shore, Gateway, 62nd Avenue, and two in downtown St. Pete, Tropicana, and 4th Street. The difference in the colors is that FDOT's doing a, a parallel efforts in looking at intermodal centers, and those white and blue icons represent the five intermodal centers that FDOT's looking at. So that's Gateway, West Shore, Tampa, USF, and in Pasco. So those are the 13 stations we're moving forward into conceptual design. Uh, which was made it one of the major parts of our first milestone. Um, the other part is, okay, so we've, we've got a sense of where the stations are, but exactly how much of this 41-mile corridor is a dedicated BRT lane versus something else, whether it's a mixed traffic or an express lanes. And it takes a lot of work on our end to coordinate with what FDOT's doing on the interstate. Obviously, they're moving forward with their plans to modernize in, uh, the interstate, and we want to be a part of that. So we've been working very carefully with them to get some design concepts to see what's available to us on the transit side. Um, and we're looking at a number of different treatments, um, whether it's a bus on shoulder, which means it's tied to the speed of the general purpose traffic. So in other words, if traffic slows down to 35 miles per hour or less, then the bus can use the shoulder. It's very similar to what PSTA is working on right now with their bus on shoulder pilot program. Uh, we also looked at business access lanes, <laughs> business access transit lanes, those bat lanes. That's Central Avenue BRT right there. That's the same application where cars can turn from the lane, but they can't drive through it and use the transit lane to go through an intersection. What we're really focused on for the regional rapid transit project is what we call freeway-based BRT. So the concept here is that we could potentially use the same space as the bus on shoulder. So having a, a transit lane in that shoulder environment but it's there all day. It's not tied to the speeds, which is what the federal government really would like to see because they want to make sure that if you're making an investment of this type into a, a transit project of this type, that it's not tied to, to speed on the, you know, what, what's happening on the roadway side, that it's there all day for those transit users. So that's what, that's what our focus is, uh, is getting that dedicated BRT lane. Um, our baseline is essentially what FDOT's doing uh, on the uh, uh, TB Next project. They do have provisions in there for the bus on shoulder. So it's a great starting point for us. But we, again, like I mentioned, we're really trying to shoot for something that's dedicated, that's there all day. So we're building upon that as sort of our starting point. Coming out of the planning study, we had um, our Catalyst concept, which is what's represented here. Um, and what the difference here is when you see those dark purple lines, that's where we're talking about that dedicated freeway-based uh, BRT lane, that dedicated treatment for the, the transit vehicle. And as you can see, the concept coming out of the planning study was having dedicated lanes from St. Pete up into around the Gateway area, uh, using the tolled express lanes and the new Howard Franklin Bridge to get across the bay, uh, realizing that building a bridge for transit is expensive. However, when we get to West Shore, being dedicated again until we get to downtown Tampa, north of downtown Tampa to USF, dedicated, and then a couple of spot treatments up in Pasco where there's a lot of you know backup of folks getting off at 56 and 54 getting around that traffic. So that's that's the catalyst concept that came out of the planning study. That's one of the alignments, <laughs> that's one of the alternatives that we're evaluating right now in conceptual design. Um, but I mentioned before, we got a lot of questions from the public, you know, uh, how much of it should be dedicated? We had a lot of folks that were very interested in seeing the whole thing dedicated. So what we did is we started playing with the holes, right? So. We've got a hole here where we're mixed with express toll traffic. And then that piece between USF and Pasco County line was in general purpose lane, so mixed with regular automobile traffic. So the next couple of alternatives that we're evaluating is filling those holes. So what if we had a dedicated lane going all the way up to Pasco? Um, we're going to evaluate that. What if we had a dedicated lane across the Howard Franklin Bridge? And what are the, you know, what, what are the, what's the performance of that, that concept? What are the benefits? What are the trade-offs associated with that, that concept? And then our last alternative is actually looking at something that's nearly 100% dedicated all the way along the 41-mile corridor from St. Pete to, to Wesley Chapel with one small gap in downtown Tampa. Uh, we recognize that we're going to have to get out of the interstate to make a good connection to downtown Tampa and then get back into the interstate so we'll avoid the downtown interchange. 
Um, so I talked about those 13 stations. So we have an idea of what those 13 stations are, but one of the things that we're focused on now, besides you know, you know, how the actual running way works, is what are the stations? What do they look like? Is it a platform in the median of the interstate with walkways to it? That has some advantages, but it has some big disadvantages too. You know, obviously accessibility is a question mark when you're talking about that type of treatment. Or is it a station that's immediately adjacent to the interstate? Or is it something that's maybe two or three blocks away from the interstate in the neighborhood, kind of in my opinion, where you know, a good transit station should be, which is part of the community? So we're studying that. We're evaluating that right now as part of our milestone two. Um, and what I really you know, we came here today with the, uh, the hopes of uh, generating some interest from this group is we are uh, conducting a number of charrettes uh, in the first two weeks of March. Um, these charrettes are uh, specifically designed to allow people to sit around, a three-hour sort of workshop that's very interactive. Uh, we have a number of uh, uh, different exercises with the whole point of asking folks, in, in your opinion, in your vision, what makes a good transit station for this project? Like I said, is it something that's in the median or is it something that's in the neighborhood? Where in the neighborhood? And so that, that's the whole point of these charrettes. Um, and we'd really like to invite uh, the, all the members of the track committee to participate in that, those charrettes. Like I said, they're the first two weeks of March. Um, we are sending out invitations um, as soon as tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. So that should be coming to you relatively soon. Um, and we'd love to have your participation and get you involved in helping us actually sort of plan out and design what makes a good transit station. And with that, I'll take any questions. I think that was 10. Are, are the charrettes going to be here in St. Pete? Oh, it's not really up and down. They're going to be up and down the corridor. Uh, so the one we're it's doing. It's hard for us to get up to Lando Lakes. So. Understood. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, that's hopefully what we can get this project built to help with that, right? <laughs> um, so we are doing, a, for Pinellas, we're doing a charrette at the 62nd Avenue uh, station. Uh, we're going to actually hold it at the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. Uh, meeting space, which is right there pretty close to 62nd Avenue, uh, right in the gateway area. Um, and we'll have the dates for you in that invitation, which will be coming uh, very soon. And she'll forward it to all of us. Okay, yep. And I, I yep, I so believe. Those questions for I think actually we have um, uh, some of your names directly. Okay. You might receive them as well. So. Thank, you. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Uh, two quick questions. Sure. So from now, uh, to, to if the best case scenario, <coughs> Let's assume everything is approved uh, and we have funding to do that. Is are we looking into five years from now, in a base case scenario, or earlier? To have something up and running. Yes. The, um, the what we're working with is, or what we're shooting for <coughs> is sort of a phased approach because it's a big corridor. Yep. Um, and the other ingredient that we're sort of dealing with is that we want to be part of the package of construction that's happening on the interstate <coughs> rather than having construction for what they're doing, FDOT's doing on the interstate, and then us coming in at a different time and then adding more construction for the transit project, which leads us to be kind of stuck with their, uh, their phasing, their scheduling. So um, I can get that information for you as to what the TB Next schedule is and the phases that we're uh, sort of dictating our phasing for this project, uh, but it will be uh, around five to 10 years before. Five, yeah, so okay. We still have, unfortunately, some time before we see it up in operation. Okay, that's important to understand. And second one, so since you were, you were, you were mentioning that you were using data to understand which locations are the best, mm -hmm. which is great, uh, have you, if you have this portion of data, do people from uh, St. Pete Clearwater area actually go to Tampa International Airport? Because yes. it's not mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have that direct connection. There's a dotted line on the map where we, we want to make sure that, you know, at least maybe every other route or is getting a connection or maybe one route an hour is going straight to the airport. Because mm -hmm. we definitely saw from our travel market evaluation that people are trying to get to the airport. Okay. But, you know, how people use this corridor, I'll be honest, people are not going from Wesley Chapel to St. Pete. Because people can't use transit today, so it's not a trip that they're making. Maybe with this project in place, maybe that'll change. But what we're really looking at is the primary movements are St. Pete to Tampa and all the places in between. And then coming from the north, from USF Pasco to Tampa. Thank you. I'm sorry, I've read about the, the transfer station. Is that within the next 10 years uh, near the airport? 
uh, some of the lands by those hotels, or is that you know? Yeah. So uh, actually, I'm I'm supporting FDOT in that endeavor, okay. uh, which is nice uh, parallel because it fits in obviously with this project really well. Is it? It means you could just pull up, drop people there, and then have I don't know a Mickey so, Mouse over monorail or something. Well, you know? so that that West Shore Intermodal Center it will might be. Uh, one of the stations that actually has a platform in the median sure. because FDOT owns the property immediately adjacent to the north side of the interstate um, there's space in the median and we would have our we think our runway is going to be in the middle so we'd have a catwalk over uh, timing wise for the intermodal center um, it could be anywhere between the next in the next three to five years it depends upon which approach FDOT wants to take. What we're looking at now is actually soliciting interest from the private development community to do a public-private partnership for that property. Uh, yes. You just brought up something very important, which is you're saying, you know, one of your stations is going to be on property FDOT already owns. Um, in various communities, are you going to have to purchase the land where you plan to build these stations? Are you going to have to get zoning variances? Um, what kind of incentives or how do you incentivize people in these communities to support this? To support the project itself? I, uh, I'll take the first question about the right-of-way. Um, uh, the running way itself, we want everything to be in the existing interstate, so no right-of-way yeah. for, the, for that, the lanes. Yeah, that I got. But the stations, stations, we will have to have property for that in order to have a station. And, it, and that's why the charrettes are so important, because we need to know what to what degree are we investing in these stations? Is it uh, a shelter or is it a brick and mortar facility that has bathrooms and bike lockers? And that changes the conversation of how big of a parcel you need to have that station connectivity. So yet to be determined. Um, and as far as getting the public engaged, I mean, we're hoping the charrettes sort of begin, you know, get, getting the communities to take some ownership in the project moving forward, giving by establishing, you know, and let, telling us what their vision is so we can design to that. Um, but, you know, the reality is, is, you know, when people are trying to get to jobs today, especially across county lines, you, you, I mean, you got to drive, right? And I mean, that's the biggest benefit is this is a truly premium service that's there all day that gets people back and forth along that core spine of our region to get people to jobs back and forth. Are there any other questions? Because I have one more, then we'll wrap it up. Does anyone else have a question? Okay. Um, this is one, it sounds like two questions, but it's really one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm involved regionally with the uh, freeways to boulevards process, and I know there's a whole bunch of folks that are trying to tear out I-275 from downtown to the college, right. routing people to I-4, and this tends to run right down that freeway, and people are afraid we're using BRT as the justification to keep the freeway. FDOT loves right. freeways. Right. The thought was that there would be park and rides way up north in Lander Lakes <coughs> so that you wouldn't have as many cars coming downtown. Is there a combination of transit-oriented, you know, building new apartments and buildings up there, park and ride up there, to keep the cars sort of barriered off tear that freeway out and start putting in buses associated with a boulevard instead of buses buried and associated with a freeway. That's this other vision. Yes. Yeah. Where are we? I know we're 10 years away, but... So as far as the individual stations, there's no silver bullet. Every station's going to be unique. Right. I do think that the stations in Pasco County are going to be more commuter focused, which yes. would have your park and ride, which would hopefully get people out of their cars, right? right? Which would help with our congestion issue. Um, now, regarding the boulevard versus the interstate, the advantage of the interstate actually gives transit is we don't have lights to right. deal with, so it makes the speed a little bit quicker between yeah. points A and B. Um, but if there's a boulevard and the boulevard leaves space for transit, I'm happy either way. We just have more signals we have to. And that's work. that vision. The boulevard gives you that extra space yeah. to, to build things, schools and parks and yeah. all that stuff. Well, the nice part with the boulevard, you're you know, you know, and, and that's why I think we have to have a really intelligent conversation about where we put the stations. Is we know we need to be at grade and in the neighborhood, yes. which is what a boulevard does. Right. So can we do that with the interstate if the interstate's present? And, you know, so that's some of the things we're working on. Now's the time to make those decisions. Yes. <laughs> with that, then I'd like to thank Scott. Thank you. Thank you, that's thank a you great for having presentation. me. Let us get involved in the charrettes. Please. Yeah. That would be yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> um, any public comment? I don't see any. Anybody here? So... Then um, if I can do the, the chair's report, um, I did uh, attend the, build, the board of directors meeting last month. It was great. 
um, what a privilege I got to do our report to them for the first time. And uh, uh, generally, the meeting was boring. It was an administrative meeting. Anytime you want, you can watch their meetings on YouTube, and you can have your mom watch our meetings on YouTube. Um, uh, they had an overview about human trafficking, which is really cool. They're training bus drivers like they like they train uh, 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 flight attendants to say, "Hey, this seems odd. Why?" You know. So that's really cool. Uh, there was a, a big presentation we've seen before about the BRT turnaround out on the beach. Uh, uh, also, uh, you presented flamingo, I did. and that yeah. thing is coming along. So I'm really excited. How many of you are becoming uh, testers? For the phone app, the Flamingo multi. I, I wanted. I had some questions. I signed up, but I, I, I was still. Yeah. I think I signed up, but I'm not sure. I did the old stuff transfer or whatever. So. If you have a if you have a current Flamingo account and you want to transfer it over, we can help you do that. Um, we are not at the stage where we would put your um, pass that we give you as part of being a member of Track there just yet. So. You can hold off if you like. You can test it if you like. Um, pay a couple bucks. Yes, while pay you're a couple doing. bucks. To, yeah, I, to, I, yeah. I want to do that. But yes. Uh, okay. Who should I talk to? Should I talk to? I'll talk to Marianne. She'll get you in okay. touch with Espresso. Right. And yeah. I am so delighted that you finally started doing what I love, which is to call it uh, best fare as you go. Yes. And we've not been hearing that. So instead of saying at the end of the, when I get on the bus the first of the month, should I buy a day pass, a week pass, or a month pass? And I bought the month pass, but oh, my mom got sick and I had to go up north and now, you know, I lost my pass. Now it's like, hey, you just get on the bus and it's tracking you. So as you go, if you leave in the middle of the month, I mean, I love that. That to me is the biggest sell point. It was so great to hear you say, uh, best fare as you go. I was like, yes, yes. So that's great. All right. Uh, everything else, Brad just gave a really boring presentation on all of these, all of these uh, management reports and benchmarking reports. And I, I was starting to write it down, and I thought, okay, bless his heart, that's what he's in charge of. <laughs> and, and there's something I want to talk about that if you watch the presentation, um, you guys may know about Tom Rask. Tom is a is a gadfly. He shows up at every meeting. He was a big opponent to Greenlight, and he'd said three different things there. He came up and he was uh, criticizing. Uh, that in the consent agenda there were contracts worth $3 million and how can we... So, well, those contracts had already gone through bid and they had all this stuff, but he's bringing into those meetings uh, agitation. Uh, he criticized uh, what we've seen for a year, the current use of capital funds for operations. We know that we're in hard times. And so he started using the word insolvent. PSTA is insolvent, trying to raise fears and anger. And then uh, lastly, uh, 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 Long, um, Commissioner Long had pointed out how Tibarda is doing great and he said well a year ago you said they were terrible look at you don't know what you're talking about and she said no they changed and so what I'm trying to say is we have opponents out there that will say anything what I call the red light people we're the green light people they're the red light people and so it's sort of up to us to pass the good news to show up at these meetings with a good attitude because there are people as their hobby and as their unpaid job that show up with a bad attitude and a bad saying and a way to twist words. The other thing that happened uh, this month was we got to go down, uh, Gloria and I got to go down to downtown St. Pete and pass out a Star Award. It was yes. really cool. Yeah. I got to meet Mayor Christman, shake his hand, and thank him. This is what was so funny. It's uh, I went to thought, how am I passing out an award I didn't sign? It was signed by Gloria last summer. No, it was actually signed by, by, by Elizabeth. By, I'm sorry, yeah, by Elizabeth, yeah, Elizabeth right. Yeah, by Elizabeth right. last yeah. summer, sorry. And um, uh, it's for, was for the MLK uh, mm -hmm. Complete Streets. And, and Bob, you gave me that great statistic that although across the country ridership is down, so when we say, well, PSTA ridership, it's not like we're doing something crazy. It's the economy and on all these other different factors, except on MLK, ridership is up. And why would ridership be up on that street? Because when cars go slower, people are, you know, if you go stand at a bus stop and cars are zipping by at 70 miles an hour, you know, everyone will get on a bus once. Once you're on the bus, you're safe. But having complete streets and calming and all of that makes people more excited. And so what I told Mayor Kreisman, and you guys listen to this, I told him, if you want help, if you're looking for someone to come advocate to show up at a meeting where you know people are going to be calling us, we'll show up for you. And that's what I want to say. Okay, uh, that's my report. What a great month. <laughs> uh, then going on to the forward Pinellas report, Gloria. Right. Well, uh, and again, we're both on the 
uh, forward Pinellas CAC. And as you talked about boring meetings, our, our meeting last month was, was a fairly boring meeting, a lot of, a number of information pieces, uh, some, some interesting things like where they were talking about, you know, the intersection improvements for concepts for US 19 up in the north where, you know, Nebraska and, and Carmen <coughs> Ave and so forth. But, you know, again, details that we don't need to cover here today. But it's really interesting, the other things that, that Forward Pinellas is doing, and there, there are a couple of things that we've been involved with, and, and the first is, is the, the whole issue of safe streets and, and what they call Vision Zero, which is no, no deaths from the highways. And, and we're not just talking about pedestrians, we're talking about cars as well. But they, every month they, they present us with the, you know, the statistics on the, the fatality reports. And what's happening is cars are getting safer. You know, fewer people are sort of dying in their cars. But if we as pedestrians, when we get on and off buses, we are, are kind of sitting ducks sometimes. Mm -hmm. And just a quick aside, I was going to tell you all that I actually did get hit by a car just before our last meeting. Not, I mean, we, he basically sideswiped me in a driveway as I was crossing on a sidewalk. And I sort of learned, I later talked to the Clearwater Police, I should have called the police, even though I wasn't injured. But, but again, those are good things to know. Um, hmm? To get a report. To get a report, yeah, because they need to get the record. They need to understand that we are, they, that things do happen. Um, but anyway, so what, but one of the things that's really wonderful is Forward Pinellas and, and Whit Blanton has been really active with the whole issue of pedestrians, like we talk about our, our safe transit access and all of us as, as transit riders are pedestrians at some point in the beginning or end of our trip. And so I, as part of the CAC, was uh, am participating in something that is the Vision Zero effort. And they have a, a program actually that's happening uh, the kickoff is on Tuesday, March 31st. There is a meeting that's safe, the Safe Streets Pinellas Summit. Um, and so if any of you want information, I've, I've got the extra printouts on this, you can contact Sarah Caper at uh, Forward Pinellas and see what, you know, what, what involvement of additional people they And again, let's, we'll forward it to Marianne and she'll send it to all yeah, of us. Exactly. So we can, we can sign up for this conference. It's free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have, but you have to sign up for it or find out more about yeah, it before right. you do it. It's in the afternoon. It's 1 to 3 p.m. on Tuesday the 31st, so I don't know who will And it's going to be over at, uh, at the, the, uh, the ICOT Center, I think, is where Alberton, it is. ICOT, Alberton, ICOT, Alberton, Yeah, the, yeah, the Epic <coughs> Center of St. Pete College. And then the other thing is that what we had heard about and, and uh, that uh, is a letter that, and I, I, I can't speak effectively on this, but you said it's in our packet, the letter from Whit Blanton? Yes. Uh, Whit Blanton has, has uh, created a letter uh, to the legislature about they're trying to pass something that, that would make it illegal to have those wonderful rectangular flashing lights where you cross, like especially Gulf Boulevard and some other places. And I guess it's too late for us to have that as a, as a universal voting thing for us here today, but if, if any of you you know, individually send these out, that would be very helpful because we need to let our legislature know that those are, those are important safety items for us, the, the flashing rectangular beacons. That, that Can I add, because I cornered with, because I didn't really understand what's going on, and in layman's terms, as I understand it, some legislator up in Tallahassee, wherever he was from, Miami or Pensacola, just got it in his craw that he didn't like them. And so he was pushing for uh, legislation to make them illegal across the state, even though there are you know, <coughs> ten thousands of these things in Daytona Beach, and Miami Beach, and Pensacola Beach, and Saint, and they're wonderful. I mean, we see them on the, the the Pinellas Trail all over Gulf Boulevard. They are wonderful and they are safe. You hit the button, the yellow lights uh, flash, you have time to cross. But this legislator is making them, trying to make them illegal to implement any more, and have X number of years to take them all out. And again, why? Well, and my understanding is too that it had to do with the fact that well we should be regulating everything officially you know that all the lights they should all have regular red lights and and the thing is there's <laughs> such restrictions on how frequently you can have red lights and and cross streets and stuff where these flashing beacons can be in places where pedestrians are crossing right. Gulf so Boulevard being the absolute yeah. best example of it where the yeah. where these people are right. wandering so they're off and they're usually off and the Pinellas Trail they're usually off when someone comes up you hit it it's on cross the street and they go right back off I mean so they're wonderful how many lives have been saved 
And so for whatever reason to say we should pull them out. And so Witt, if, if you don't know, he is the, the forward Pinellas yeah, the uh, coordinator, a great guy, very smart, came to us from Charleston, South Carolina about five, six years ago. What? From Orlando, via. And then um, uh, drafted this letter, and we were going to have us vote on it so we could as pass, but we missed the deadline. But we can still certainly all individually uh, do that. And uh, if we waited a month to do it, then it'll be too late because the vote will probably be done in Tallahassee. But we would like, I would like us, could, could, we, could, we, could we do that at least as a, a, a consensus that we all support? Uh, flashing yellow beacons on places like Golf Boulevard and the Pinellas Trail is that legal? Where's my expert on uh, on the uh, rules of order and uh, it's not an action item. It's not an action item, but it's uh, like a consensus of the committee. Something. Could we do that? You could do a consensus. You just want to see like how people feel about it. Yeah. Take can I can I call someone to have a consensus of the committee? I call I I call for a consensus of us to. Uh, to Support this this not trying to block the legislation that would take away our flashing beacons. In support of beacons support, staying. Right. Yeah, in support of beacons. Can I have a second for that? Second. Yeah, and can we have a, a, a vote? All in favor of yellow beacons of, of opposing the removal of them, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And unanimously, the sense of this committee is that we agree with Whit Blanton, and although we cannot make that an official policy because it just missed the agenda. <laughs> can we, I, I hear another question, can we send the, uh, this letter with a cover letter from us that says we are a member of, the, of a Transit Riders Advisory Committee and we, and our committee in fact, you know, I can. You can certainly ask, yeah, say you that. can certainly ask us to do that. We can, we can certainly have a letter from Doug and Simon. Yeah. Oh, there okay, we go. excellent, there we good. Go. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And, and I can, we include language that there was a consensus, consensus. of something or other. Yes. We'll figure it out. Okay. Some weasel words that will Thank you. satisfy <laughs> uh, the uh, open records requirement. So For goodness <laughs> sakes, this is like motherhood and apple pie. It's not, who's against uh -huh. it? Well, and, yeah, and so that's it from Forward Pinellas. Like I said, Forward Pinellas is working, uh, doing an awful lot of the things that matter to all of us, too, is what, what it, Has anyone ever said about Vision Zero that it started with the question, how can we eliminate pedestrian and bicycle deaths, how many should we tolerate? Like, you know, should we do 10%? You know, should we have 10,000, 1,000? It's like, you know how many we should have? Zero. <laughs> That's how many. Well, yeah, but Vision Zero is not just about the pedestrians, though, too. It's, yeah. it's about deaths in general on the yeah. highways. And so yes. now every time, you, every time you do anything, if you cut down a tree, if you put in a stop sign, you should stop and say, have we optimized this so that nobody gets killed here? Yeah. We should be thinking about it. It should be on your things to consider Vision Zero is a great, never mind. When they first said it, I thought, yeah, you're right. How many deaths is okay? How about none? Okay, thank you very much. Nicole's getting ready. Okay. Thank you. So let's, um, our action item the next is the approval of minutes. Did everyone get their minutes? Do you all have a chance to read them? Were there any amendments or uh, omissions or changes? Or Do we spell your name right? <laughs> all right, well then can I get a... Uh, uh, a motion to approve the minutes as uh, published. A motion. There's a motion and a second. A second, Teresa. Thank you. And uh, all in favor of approving the minutes as published? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? None opposed. Then uh, carried a, uh, unanimously the January minutes are approved. Then let's go on to 6B, which is our second follow-up from last month, the track initiatives for 2020. Yay. If you remember, we did some brainstorming. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> we did some brainstorming last month, and you all had homework to go home and think of anything else. I'll say that for myself, I did. I thought about it, and I couldn't come up with anything else. So we yes. did such a good job. Uh, but if I can uh, turn all right. it over to uh, Nicole. Absolutely. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Dufa, public engagement planner here at PSTA. It's always good to be back in track. Um, so today we wanted to do, um, just to keep it nice and short and sweet, do a quick recap of what we talked about last week and then um, vote on what you would like your initiative to be. So as a, actually speaking of our Complete Streets Award to the City of St. Pete, I happen to get this lovely photo of Duncan and Gloria here with uh, Mayor Christman. Because the Track Star Award is one of the initiatives that you all do every or have done the last two years, where you are highlighting businesses, companies, cities, 
um, who are doing great work around pedestrian access to transit and hopefully then lowering fatalities in the process. Um, also wanted to just highlight, so I did a recap. We had five track members from last year participate in uh, several events that we had, whether that was surveys, whether that was outreach events, or whether that was um, spring break. Um, so we had six of you participate in that last year, at six or five of you participate at six events last year. So we really appreciate that. And hopefully um, we can do something more this year. So this wordy list is just a consolidated list of the initiatives that we brainstormed last month. Um, so in your packet, I did a little quick synthesis. Um, you talked about assisting with regional initiatives and coordination. We just had a presentation from TBARDA today about that same sort of regional. And Flamingo. Uh, and Flamingo as well. Um, I know, Duncan, you talked about last month how to be a YIMBY. How are we? We're green light people, right? We are green light about transit. Um, how do you promote and advocate for better, not only regular transit, but regional paratransit? Promoting the image of riders, which I see goes hand in hand with creating a brand for track, because you all are riders. Um, being PSTA ambassadors, so uh, partnering with different agencies to be able to promote transit and teach people how to ride the bus. Um, and then we also had another addition of the new technology implementation, um, which taking a look at this list, <laughs> we at PSTA saw there's a lot of overarching themes here. Well, before we go any farther, has, did everyone else do your homework? Did anyone else come up with Want something? Or, like myself, did you just say, well, I can't think of anything? Anything you like to add? It's a good list. I think this. Yeah, yeah same. Okay, great. Let's continue. Thanks, Nicole. So we saw some overarching themes here. Pro assisting with the regional initiatives and coordination, whether that's transit, like regular fixed route transit service or our, para, uh, or our paratransit service, how to say yes, how to be a, a advocate for transit service, the um, yes in my backyard for BRT. We sort of see this as promoting transit overall. This sort of fits in an umbrella where we see promoting the BRT, teaching people how to ride, uh, supporting regional transit initiatives like the um, regional bus rapid transit. The image of riders all comes under promoting transit. What are we trying to do with the image of riders? We're trying to promote transit as a service. We're just normal people using the bus to get around instead of our car. You know, normalizing transit service in, uh, in a very car-centric community that we live in here. Um, but also techno new technology implementation is also promoting transit. If you're thinking about Flamingo in particular, that's our current new tech that we're working with and hopefully uh, debuting this year, definitely debuting this year. Um, but I also wanted to ask, are there other examples that you were thinking of just to add to the brainstorm for other folks? Any, because I know Roman, you had the yeah. suggestion for the new technology implementation. Yeah, I'm actually uh, waiting for um, getting information uh, from you guys on what projects in smart city and IoT are doing, and that was actually in that gotcha. realm, uh, improving uh, improving transit services based on new technologies and um, Flamingo. Or you mm -hmm. have a cool app which is transit yeah. uh, which all takes into account GPS IOT devices yeah. uh, and so so basically making informed decisions mm -hmm. on how to improve experience of the users and also efficiency of the transit gotcha. okay. and I'm in the same spot I, and before retirement I was in a tech job very interested in that I used the, all the apps sitting <coughs> in the corner trying to sell people on it anything we would do that way. I don't know if it would involve the whole committee or as a, um, what did we call these, uh, an initiative, mm -hmm. but if we start trying to keep us up to date and become ambassadors within the committee, I would love to work mm -hmm. with you and yeah. receive briefings or think, yeah. whatever. Whatever. Thank you. Absolutely. That didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Um, so I think that, that, yeah, go ahead, Andrew. I just had one thought I wanted to add. Um, yesterday was the, um, Pinellas County Property Appraisers in Service Day. We were all together in a building. It was pretty wild. And um, I brought something up to the Assistant Director, which is that we're building a new building at 2534th Street North. That's ours. Yes. And you've got this captive audience. They're either waiting in the DMV or they're waiting upstairs to see us. Mm -hmm. They will be. And you know, there's really no place where you see a map of 
PSTA and what it looks like. And you've got this captive audience. And could we reach out to the directors of both the tax, you know, the tax collector, Charles Thomas, <coughs> and Mike Twitty, who's you know my director, mm -hmm. and say, hey, wait a second, can we just you know promote this thing of Dallas County in your? Can we put a display up in your building upstairs and downstairs? Just you know when you talk about. That's Sure. You know, teach how to ride. And, and why not? Why not Raymond James? And why not? Uh, right. That was my thing. Know, was Congress, Westfield Raymond Mall, James and, the, and et cetera. And why not shopping. every single off? I don't know whether you know the Clearwater yeah, City offices and say whether they have that information. They may. Or right? things near Hub certainly. Yeah. But like, uh, <coughs> it was suggested that yeah. you know the person who's the appropriate person at PSTA reach out to at least Charles Thomas, mm -hmm. if not Mike Twitty. Okay. Absolutely. These are great suggestions for you all who are out in the community, at your workplaces, on the bus, where you see places to be able to promote PSTA more. Thinking about a captive audience, sometimes those folks might not be able to drive their car and they're, they're there for other reasons and they took the bus to get there. So what a great suggestion to make. Absolutely. So all of the, so correct me if I'm wrong here. I see, I know last year we selected as the tracker, the track selected to be a PSTA ambassadors. And that looks like attending outreach events and supporting uh, PSTA's outreach team out in the community. What if one of the, um, this is obviously for a vote, like 2.0, PSTA ambassadors 2.0, how can you take this further? So it's not just when we need help, but out there on your own as track members, as riders of PSTA, finding the opportunities to be able to promote transit. So whether that's work at your workplace where you see an opportunity to put a map and uh, information up, whether that's um, thinking about at, at SPC or other schools or um, other big businesses where you see opportunities, being able to um, promote transit. Maybe bringing a friend with you on the bus, someone who's never ridden the bus. You know, there are other ways to be ambassadors to PSTA than just supporting the outreach team and going to um, events for us. It's also as easy as social media. You know, we see a lot of the uh, red light people active <laughs> online. You know, like, where do we get information? So how are we more active online as well? PSTA can't respond to everything or PSTA shouldn't always be shouldn't the one be. to respond to everything. Yeah. So how can we use our um, PSTA promoters here in this room to support us even in the social media space? So that is one of the, so when I think about this initiative of promoting transit, this can include. Yeah. So taking what was the ambassador, where mostly we just put on uh, yellow vests and there's a new uh, Route 9 <laughs> stops here instead of there. We help, we help with in a very narrow, mm -hmm. but saying, let's make this thing bigger. Mm -hmm. I like it, Ambassador 2.0. Mm -hmm. I, I had a thought question, because it, it, these were all really cool ideas in terms of promoting transit that, that we all have. I don't know how this would work, but what about the idea of almost us almost having an internal contest so that we c come up with our ideas, and that in the end we it, we you know the, the, here's my my recommendation for you know an idea for promoting transit. <coughs> See, I don't know how you would do that, but so that I could you know I could say well I can promote this at my condo, mm -hmm. and I think we should get this social media message out, or you know. So I love that point that you just brought up, Gloria. Uh, contest in internally. Internally. What does that look like? So. Traction, one of our uh, department directors. Oh my uh, goodness. Traction, so track yeah. and action. Um, what resources do you want? <coughs> Are there incentives that you want from us at PSTA? Are there goals that you want to set? You know, what do you think would help make it more robust? So PSTA Ambassadors 2.0. What can we provide you? What are some ways that you think that internally you'd even motivate each other to do more because now you're competing with each other, um, but in a good, healthy way? Yeah, good way. Okay. So just some things to think about. Yeah. Um, I, I still am having trouble with the open meeting and all of that. I see us forming some kind of small work team to figure that out. Which is so we exactly aren't doing what it we here. did two years ago. So we, we do that here. We, and then once we say, okay, here's how we're going to do it, it seems... Now we just we're just working on it. Now it's like, like it didn't matter when we all showed up in vests. We could do that, yeah. but it's the it's the brainstorming and the thinking mm -hmm. stuff. We'd have to do those here, mm -hmm. but we would need to do those all within the first month because twenty twenty is going to is going to quickly be June, July, September, <laughs> December, and the year will be over. So. 
but yeah, those kind of ideas. Get a couple, three of us together who are interested in it, and and do it. If, if well, we did if reporting out each meeting, what have you done so far? <laughs> thinking about all the ways that you were engaged and active. And then and then ask you guys for support in terms of printing a map. Or, you know, yeah. do we want a map or is it a mm -hmm. flyer or a mm -hmm. slogan or whatever? Mm -hmm. I got a question that's uh, addressed to the drivers. It's about timelines on buses. Mm -hmm. and, Go ahead. And what's happening is is that early in the morning when the driver leaves the leaves the uh, garage, mm -hmm. he cannot leave too early or he'll get written by the supervisor. Mm -hmm. So, and then the second thing is if a bus is late, and I know that it's late and I'm riding the bus, right? And I tell the driver on the phone, can you hold the bus for me? But if that driver is on that tight timeline, mm -hmm. there's nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. He does have the discretion of the driver to hold for me or not, based on his timeline. Yeah, so uh, when you talk about that in, and the um, member comments okay. at the end, because yeah, we can yeah, address right. those yeah, specific yeah. points, yeah, because we have by a few the way, folks that in is here. Part, from, that yeah. is part of being is to come back with that too. Yeah. I, that has been an mm -hmm. issue for me as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got a suggestion. I don't know how many of us live in communities like condos mm -hmm. or apartments that have community mm -hmm. rooms. Yeah. I've, in fact, I've got to restock two routes on it. They, somebody put up this little thing for like oh, different insurance and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. and I started sticking the maps and the <coughs> routes that are closest to us mm -hmm. and I've been Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. quietly <laughs> advocating you know when anybody's complaining about not having a car or whatever yeah. you know you say oh like, well did you know PSJ yeah. route <coughs> right by here. No, you only have to have make one connection to get from here to there. You're already and, yeah. doing that. That's yeah. awesome. So, so what I'm seeing, and I don't mean to be reading ahead on you, Nicole. Oh, that's okay. But um, in the past, we've been able to do either one initiative or two, and you've you've split the other ones into advocacy. All right? It is promotion? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, uh, you, we yeah, you can educate and educate. We can help you educate. We can give you information. But we, as PSTA staff, will not advocate for certain things. Mm -hmm. Just right. in, in case those things come so up. So for Paratransit and yeah. TFARTA, we would be um, advocating. We'd be writing a letter. We'd be doing our three minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And so we could form those as two. I don't know about Flamingo. didn't fit in there. Yeah. But, but as two overarching initiatives, one is thinking and cheerleading and showing up in vests and Here's would be a great idea. Mm -hmm. Stuff we see every day, and run that under one kind of subcommittee or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then this other one that says, we want to show up and, and advocate. And then anything else we want to do, just do as people. Because like, I'm still waiting for my tour of the garage, you know, or whatever, you know, let's learn about new technology, or I wonder how these schedules gets printed, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those things we can do as just as individuals. Yeah. But what about that? Is I'm, I didn't mean to steal the thunder, but is that what you're doing this? Well, why don't you... Um, so I know that we talked about... Mega, also mega initiatives. There's keeping... Like, yes. The, correct me if I'm wrong, Cassandra, here. All of that could fall under one umbrella of uh, promoting transit service, promoting transit in Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. um, and then that could look like a couple of different legs, whether that's... Uh, the cheerleading, like you said, showing up and supporting PSTA, but that could also look like being active, attending community meetings, voicing your opinions, writing your legislators. That could look, because um, I know that we just talked about signing a letter on as track. So those are legs of promoting regional so I, I or would, service. I would, if we want to do this little subcommittee concept, mm -hmm. if you want to mm -hmm. go yeah. there, right? Work team. Um, then we can do that. Um, what I would suggest is that because the, it is a year, the time frame is short, is you may want to think about um, things that are um, very well defined and have measurable outcomes so that you can say, you know, we did this this year um, and, and make sure that at the end of the year we can, or at the beginning of next year when we say this is what you've done the last few years, you have something very concrete that you mm -hmm. could yeah. that you, you could you could do, mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's the number of people that you all reach, 
right? Um, maybe it's, you, you know, you try to see how many pictures with other riders you can take, you know, and post them on social media. Um, if you post them on social media, we'd love to right? retweet. I will, yeah. And I will buy you big buttons that say, you know, I am the voice of the rider. <laughs> Come talk to me, yeah. or whatever you want them to say. Yeah. Um, get, yeah, so get the those traction, are the, right. Yeah. So those kinds of things we can help you do that then have some kind of measurable outcome. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So I know that there's a vote. Yeah. Well, the last one there, the images of the writers. By the way, I loved that when I first heard it. Uh, because there's this old saying. I don't know. Is it 100 years old? That says you don't judge the quality of a society by how many poor people have cars, but by how many presidents ride the bus, you know? And that's a, a, a wonderful, you know, so when we talk about in Copenhagen and having a millionaire on the bus, because he said that's what we do, you know, that's how we measure success. But I don't know how we would possibly, I mean, what are we gonna do, is a commercial and run it on cable? I mean, it's, it seems like out of our... Well, I, I, I know our uh, director of marketing might disagree because I think <laughs> anything that you put on um, and you tag PSTA on social media, that is the image of the rider. If that's you riding the bus, if it's you and your friend taking the bus, if it's you okay. as track members, you know, posting on social media, we then then can boost that. And what does that look like if not? Okay, so actually roll rider. that up into number one and yeah. say it's part of cheerleading. It's part of cheerleading. It's making yes. us mm -hmm. okay, sure. You more visible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually want to clarify, maybe uh, I feel lost a little bit, maybe I didn't understand the whole discussion. So we are advisory committee to the board of PST. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about promotion and I'm thinking what I'm advising to the board if I'm promoting PST. I mean I'm yeah. fine with doing that, it's a totally cool idea, but I don't understand sure. what is our... Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what has happened in the last, it was about three years ago, we started saying, just talking to the board got kind of boring, because they would tell us what to think, we would vote on it, and then it was over, you know. And so we were sort of, in many ways, we were the last guys to hear about it. You know, we approved this in <coughs> April, and in May we'd hear about it, and, yeah, it looks good. And so we started saying, well, we have our own issues, and the first one, as I remember, was more Safety. lit bus stops. You know, you guys don't really wear it, but we are. So. That's, by the way, part of my last initiative, and I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but I really would like to see our name change from, it. what's the A stand for? Advisory. Advisory to advocacy, that we are writer advocates, not writer advisors. I don't, I don't like this notion that there's a board and we advise them like, yeah, it looks good, you're doing all right. I think I, we do both. I no, no, I know, I understand we do, but I think, by saying we, we are advocates, we are advocates for writers, we start saying, hey, there's not enough safety. Hey, remember if someone was advocating for art, we want more art, more pleasant surroundings. Uh, we're advocating for better sidewalks, because the board isn't involved. The board is worried about budgets, headcount, uh, maintenance, uh, and, and so but there we, are some things that we that we make sure we bring to this absolutely. committee. And then when we give our board report, we say the track approved this or had questions about whatever. Like I don't in any way means to. I don't mean in any way mean to diminish was, that so. piece of it. That's very very important. However, what we said at some point was we'd also like to have a pet project, and so we picked to say one project <coughs> here we would pick the advocate. And, and, and even within that, we said it would be voluntary that if we found uh, the most popular mm -hmm. and those that wanted to participate. And usually, they're like things that strike us as common sense, and that's uh, three years ago, it was the bus stop, <coughs> safety, the star award, and then we, we send ourselves off voluntarily because we're all pretty heavy duty bus riders, and that's, that's how that happened around well, the, the history of it. <coughs> and this committee also acts as a, almost a focus group for the staff as well. And so you'll see we'll bring um, in the information items, it'll be more of a discussion, but it's something that we've been thinking about that we would like your opinion on, right? And so that's the other part of the advisory. Right. It's not just it's a, you know advising the board on certain things in terms of giving your comments and hearing from riders <coughs> when they're making decisions about service changes, I mean, staff's Data is important, right? And then rider, how, how riders feel about the changes is important. And, and, you'll, and I, you'll see an example when we get there. But this, the track initiatives really did start from this 
committee wanting to do more even outside so do something so and, I, I, it, had this it wasn't enough right it wasn't enough to be just advising the board and, and staff on certain issues it was <coughs> Wanted to speak. We wanted to, be, to have. Wanted to say uh, we want. We we want to be heard. Yeah. Right? And the first year, and a lot of times when we're all done with the initiative, it's to send a letter to Tallahassee or to send a letter to the county commission. Well, that was the first year. The, the first, first year, year, year there were two. There were two two groups that we ended up two initiatives. And one was safety, and that was that's where this Track Star Award program mm -hmm. ultimately came from. And then the second was uh, on regional transit. And so we did. We sent letters to FDOT and to, you know, to forward Pinellas and to everyone saying, and to our, to, yeah. So it was, it was several it issues that you wanted power. to be heard. Yeah. We wanted to be heard. Yes. We wanted them to understand how important regional transit was to us, you know, that we love our local system, but we want to be able to get to the airport easily. And, yeah. Yeah. Something that comes from the writer's advisory board is pretty strong. It feels good, and so why not? That's where it, 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 it's kind of that's kind of the history of it. So I think maybe we should. If you want to, if you want to do the um, subcommittee, we can do that, and we can maybe come up with some more direct and defined things that you would do this year through yeah. that subcommittee. Right, and then come back and, and run it by the board. Because that has to be a posted meeting, right? Though. Yeah. It would be, yeah. We could do it just do before it. this one, like we did last time. So we do like a three o'clock session mm -hmm. in front of the four o'clock. Yeah, that would work. Or any, I mean, it'll just have it be an open, whoever is able to attend and wants to. <sighs> I'm imagining for the, um, uh, the ambassadors, we would, that group would get together and just write some ideas like, here's how to log on to Facebook, or here's, Here's the kind of stuff you might take to your, you know, it, here's how to be a good ambassador. I never um, approached someone on a bus until we had initiatives. When someone finally said, don't just sit here and, and tell me that's a good idea. Go, get out there and, and I was like, yeah, I should, you know, and that's, it, it sort of changed so my whole life. So we don't want to stop the initiatives that you've already started, so right. we'll continue the Track Star Award. Absolutely. Um, continue to invite you to attend things with staff um, to, to events and things like that. So for those of you who are new and don't have track shirts, Teresa, do you have yours on? Don't you? Yes. Good. Can you model for us? Awesome. Yeah. 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 Don't have one or need another you know, shirt size and yeah, color. Shirt size and a color, and she'll uh, and she'll get you one so that you can come out with us. So what, no, so I have I have the uh, oh, what is that called? It's like maroon. It's, yeah. Okay. I, so so let's agree to do that then. Have can we do that? We'll say we'll have two working groups that'll figure out exactly what it means to be a promotion group that'll pretty much just tell us all how to be better promoters and then advise you guys how to help us promote a little bigger than last time. I mean, last time it was very narrow, like, yeah. let's yeah. just help a little. Yeah. And then a second group for initiatives, how do we do that? Like an advocacy group, you're saying? Yeah, an advocacy, I'm sorry, yeah, an advocacy okay. So we'll come back next month with that, is that correct? Okay. <sighs> So we would have to meet before We'd next meeting. We'd have to meet before the next meeting. Right. Yeah. So if we're going to, you know, whatever the next meeting is, the 20th of, of uh, March, we would meet at 3 o'clock. <laughs> Let's do it right before. We'll do it right before and then just report out. For the, for the promotion. <laughs> for anybody. Yes. 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 But the advocacy group. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. I'm whoever. Okay. Yeah. So you can come in. So that'll be in the okay. invite for next month. You know, 4 o'clock regular meeting. Please come at 3 to get involved and... Yeah, should, should, should we? You know, oh, I was just going to say, should we like notify anybody that we want to be a part of that committee, or that, that we're planning to come? I think. It was, I mean, it's, just, it's really clear that you need more time to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. let's give you the extra hour. We'll focus just on that, this particular Please issue break. at three o'clock. Anybody who is on the committee is welcome to come. Right, okay. and then. Okay. During the meeting, if you've got, now you've got homework for the month, is to think if there's a particular initiative which is political, 
paratransit, uh, uh, T-Varda, uh, highways to byways, you know, whatever it is, we'll put that off a whole month. We may run out of time for the year. I'm worried about that. But, you know, I think that's the important one. The promotion is probably the important one. The other one always just ends up generating a letter. So, there you go. Okay. I hear a strategy. Yes. There's a strategy. Just, um, should we have a, uh, agree? Is, uh, <coughs> I think you're okay. You can just Good? All right. I'll plan. Thank you, guys. Then, uh, oh, oh, I lost my agenda. Um, then moving on, uh, Nicole, is that? That's all you got for, well, I'll Perfect. come back in a little bit, but. Okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> then uh, what are we looking at next? The uh, de departure boards. Uh, Raj? Good afternoon, yeah. members. My name is Raj. Oh. I'm with the planning scheduling department here at PSDA. And I'm going to show you some new cool stuff that we were we're working on with. Uh, don't mind that you can't see these up close. I will have them on the big screen for you to look at. So this is something that you guys get to see first, unlike, you know, that the board saw it and then you're seeing it. So you get to see it first, right? So here's raw. So you get to see the raw, the, the how, how the sausage is being made. So you guys also know what this is. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is our, at our, you can read that one. Over 650. Uh, so this is just, um, sketches just for right now, information purpose. So this is at over 650 locations throughout the county at every wow. center, right? So this is uh, uh, what a bus schedule would be at any location you go to. And then you would have to go and find where you're at, what bus you want, and where you're going. So we thought of two different ways to present this at our locations. and. The first one is something similar to what's out there right now, and this is by the, the schedule route layout. This is what a Route 4 would look like at, if you're at Gateway Mall. It'll give you just the Route 4 times at that location, not the entire schedule of when it's going to be at uh, Grand Central, uh, downtown St. Pete, or here at the Layby. So when you're looking at the Route 4 at that location, you will just see the schedule for that location only and the direction it's heading. So that's what you're looking so at watch. here, and this would be something how the similar layout is to current what you have. So it's a little backed up. So this is the magic of technology, right? Right. Raj so this works in a program, does all the scheduling. Right. And we found a new module in the program that will allow us to show you the time for that location. And it will also, so it's, it's doing two things. One, it's giving you better quality of data, but also, um, Minimizing the, the staff time and, that it takes and layout time, right? And so we want to float this by you all to see which which format you like best, and we'll start to play with these so we can a streamline our efficiency internally, but also give better data at each location. Correct. So right now, what I you're was looking say at, you need to show, run this by a focus group. But it done. I mean, that's what you're doing right now. Hey, yeah. <laughs> so you get to make a decision today, right? So the layout right now you're seeing is has some inserted times in between. So it's breaking it out by blocks, by four to eight. So we can. That's all customizable. So this is just to bring it to you first, raw data hand, so you can get feedback on what you would like it. So in front of you, you have a packet to vote for it today of the layout. This will be option two, one. One. option one, which is the layout of by route by buses. You said it says direction, but I don't see where, like if you're looking at this particular one, where does it tell you the direction? It just says. So if you look at the, the one on the screen up here, yeah. so the, the, the one to the left is to go to the lay-by. To come That's to the lay-by. To the lay-by. Right. And the other one is to go to Roy Hanna. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is what you would be showing at Gateway Mall. But if you want to go to the lay-by, that's the thing if you want to go to the, okay. So you get the only location stops both directions. Okay. I've got a question on that right now as far as I can remember. The last time I was at Gateway, the buses just pull up to whatever's there. right that's a come serve because of the layout of yes, the land right. there yes but that says 
Gateway Shelter One, so that's what was. Confusing. So Shelter One is the first shelter out. Yeah. So we would just but that's all, the, all the shelters will have the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's the location base. Yeah. Okay. All right. And option two would be to have it <coughs> in a time out, time out order where you have all of the times at that location and to the right of that column would have all the buses pulling out at that time and in the middle it tells you the destination they're heading to. So would this is like a, for Grand Central or Pinellas. So right at five o'clock in the morning so at 515 you have two buses leaving one is the 74 the Seminole and the other one is the uh, 100x to Marion Transit and Tampa. So at the time of day that you're at this location you go there and you want to see which buses are going where that's an option to Raj, my apology for keep interrupting. I live up in North County, so for most of our stuff, there's one bus. When we think of a stop, it's just that one bus. Down here, that makes much more sense. Right. So Go this is for individual mall. or well, multi location. Yeah, countryside Mall. Countryside, yeah, mall. countryside right. mall has that. Yeah, You're right. So, no, You're right. Right. No, so Countryside Mall is a time point for yeah, multiple route changing yeah, right there. I, I stand corrected. You're right. Correct? Yeah, that's what I Yes. I, I really like both. Of them, cause you like both of them? Once you get right there, you can see where it's going. But a lot of times when I'm home, when I'm doing it, I still pull up the old, you know, old schedule this way. Because I want to know when I'm going to get to the next place Absolutely. so I can catch my bus that's connecting to that one. Right, so that's where we use that's our transit my app, that's our real-time app, that's exactly and that's going to help you with your connection and all that. So we're trying to evolve with the technology. Uh, you know, this makes it a lot easier. It's just Correct. I only use that for if I'm connecting. Right. So if you're connecting, you have your options with or your I know when I'm going to get right. to the place if i got a doctor's appointment. Correct. Um, I have a slight visual question, which is on option one, if you could put that back up on the screen. Okay, they're going, you're, you're at a central location. One side's going one direction. The other side's going the other direction. Can you just put the two buses on either, uh, you know, facing different directions so you understand yeah. it's on the, the same schedule, like up at the top? <laughs> You're laughing, but yeah. it's true. Yeah, it's it's, true. Just it's something it. we can try to configure, yeah. Okay. So everything is uh, right. configurable. Right. Well, something that I say, um, this one is northbound, this one is southbound. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just have the buses going in three different so, directions. So, yeah, the direction is, is one of the... Or something. Yeah. Okay, Correct. Good. Yeah. So the direction is one of the options we'll probably be most likely Persistent putting up there cruise, instead of the heading direction. Yeah, so with both of these, and this is another visual thing, I would kind of want the route number to be to the left of the time. Other, There's like this weird giant void in between where the route number is and everything else on both layouts. I agree with you. I feel like if you tighten it up by moving the route number to the left of the times and just have it right next to the times, so you're like, okay, route four is coming at 6.18 a.m., great. Okay. Like, rather than like, okay, 6.18 a.m., going to the lay-by, oh, that's route four. So you yeah. prefer time, the route, then the destination? Yeah, I mean, yeah. time and route could be either way, but like those two yeah. route next to each other. And yeah, so the so route to the left. Because right now, like the way it is, it's oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, floating the out there. I didn't even see yeah. it there. Yeah. No, it needs yeah, to yeah, be. Yeah, that's on, flipped that's over. The four has to be all the way to the left, not all the way to so the left. So I think the most important thing is to put the route and the time next to each other. I think time would be the first thing on the left column because you want to go by time, don't you? And then we can have uh, the route. I think if you know mm. that it's, like, you can tell pretty easily that it's organized by time. But I'm not sure. I would like, do the I route. Would that would be too, yeah. yeah, route first. I would do route first, yeah. yeah. For scanning, you would scan by route. route. Yeah. Route. Yeah. Route. Yeah. Diff, diff, yeah. Right now, it's much more difficult. Even for me, it was good vision. <laughs> it's yeah. difficult. So that's like an added layer you have right now, which you don't have before, which is you just had the times right. and the destination. Right. Right. So if we put the time, the route next to the time, that would be an yeah. added layer, which is a benefit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that would make it a little simpler. Okay. So, exactly. I agree. so this is what the Route 9 would look like because it's a one format. Yeah. It's in the same scenario of just one direction and it would be at a location base <coughs> at Grand Central, mm. at the, you know, when it goes back towards... So, so the main change actually is, in a matter of fact, is that you're just cutting all the stops that are not necessary, correct? So user is actually seeing only this current location and further stops in one or another direction. That's the only change because right now we have all the. Right. That in a nutshell, yes, but this is coming straight from one of our programs, the cool programs that it just sends it right out to the printer. And this, 
the old antiquated way was it takes a lot of manipulation to get it to what you want to see Graphic there, designers, right? So this is something that's setting, new with new stuff with, stuff with, with like Cassandra said button. with the programs that we have. We're moving forward innovatively, and then these are the things that it can do. So we're so we're right at the beginning of looking at this, right? And these are the two most basic outputs that our program can do. When we get a sense of do you want to see it isolated by route? Or do you want to see it isolated by time? By time, and, and then we can take them and start to customize them. Right. Right. right and right. we'll start adding flip the bus additional around, details put whatever, you know. that you're that you're talking about, like flipping the the routes for. Okay. So in this this particular case, this is Gateway Mall. And it's in timeout order. It's in timeout order. So if you say, well, I'm going to Seminole Mall. And you get there, and you're like, "Well, I just missed the 74, but oh, I see. There's another. I can take the 58." Correct. Right. Exactly. So th yeah. that's what we're trying that's to get you is, yeah. especially those those locations where you can take multiple routes to get there, and maybe something. Maybe you're running late. Maybe you're running a little early, <laughs> and you have those options right there in front right. of you. That's correct. Yeah, that's exactly. Wonderful. So today, right now, out. actually, what we're asking you is to tell us which layout you prefer for us to move forward with and keep enhancing. So would you like to have all the route like separated where I know I'm taking the route four, I only want to see the route four. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't care anything else that's that's at this location, or do you want to see yeah. all of the routes that are at that location all in one space? Because <coughs> it, it can be overwhelming either way. Yeah. Right. It's just dawned on me, you're talking about the sheet that's going to be on the uh, kiosk. These are not the little flyers. You're not going to right. No, that's just for you, that's just for you to vote today <laughs> of the two different. No, no, no we're not going to have it this, eight by eleven. Yeah, this you'll have you'll have this layout in this size at the location where all the departure roads right. currently are. So when and, I'm when legible, I'm, when I'm sitting right? at Grand Central or Gateway Mall, and I just miss my bus, I run up to the kiosk and say, "What's so?" It's like at the airport. Uh, when's my flight to Atlanta? Oh, that, there you that, go. Now that I know that, that's yeah. actually wonderful. I see what it's doing. Right. So this is what I'm asking you guys to let us know which one we should, which direction you vote for us to head. Number two. Andrea. Two. Number two. two. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for exactly that reason that you get to Gateway Mall, it's like, oh shoot, I just missed the four. Well, yeah. maybe I can take the nine. Yep. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Right. Nine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 With bus stops, do you still have map? Because map the system map will be next to this. This is not in lieu of the okay. system map. The yeah, system map will still be there. Yeah. Yeah. This is in lieu of the current okay. schedule layout, right? So the, the system map, wherever they are, this is that's a separate uh, mm -hmm. object by itself. Right. So that's if you have any more questions. If not, I'm just going to ask you to circle That's which one you prefer, which yeah. one for us to move forward with, and you can either leave it, give it to Marianne at the end, <coughs> or if you want to do it and we collect it now. <coughs> <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. I love to give you feedback. How many people? Can we do it? Can we have a, a quick? Uh, yeah, I did mine. I did mine. Yep. Yeah. That's what I did. Yep. So here's. Yeah, you don't have to. Do you want? Do you want a pen? Hello. Hello. You want the pen? We'll take it. Thank you very much. Did you write one? Any other questions? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's got one in the backpack. I've got one in the backpack. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we passed it down. Yeah, it's <laughs> Make it easy. Yeah, looks like you need some animals, too. Right, I'm the, the key. Let's take this yeah. down, right? Any of us, I mean, oh, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. 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 I can turn street, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I can take one of the three different oh, crowds out. Yeah. 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 Big and bold. Yeah. So we'll be seeing when will each of them get to the countryside mall. Yeah, I know. Routes, but they one will go much faster than the other. It's like in the 60s. Why do the same thing? Park side, I mean. Park Street, I do the same thing, too. You know, it's my blog. They're all 52. I laid. You all set? Hey, here you go. All right. I'm Bob Lasher here today to tell you about our uh, spring break service that we run specially in Dunedin and out on Clearwater Beach. Some of you may be familiar with it. I know some of you helped with this last year. I'm just going to go over it. It's not a lot different from last year. Starting with Clearwater, uh, we have a new parking area, which is kind of nice. Last year we didn't have the uh, Harbor View slash Coachman Park 
parking area available. We do now this year. So we've added that, and then we've got City Hall lot, and then there's another kind of a grass gravel lot just to the south of City Hall, which we also used last year. So we'll be using those. Uh, during the week, the Jolly Trolley will be servicing those three park and ride, park and ride lots. Monday through Thursday, and then we're going to add some of our buses, not only the Suncoast Beach Trolley, but extra buses on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we'll have at least 15 minute service going back and forth from these lots. And this is just some of the routing showing you'll leave Park Street uh, when you're going southbound. It'll head up to Drew, come in to, let me see. This is the uh, parking area for Harbor View, and it comes up, and then this is the parking area for City Hall, and there's another parking area right here. So it heads down, hits all of those, heads out to the beach. Does, does everybody know <coughs> that the Harbor View Center's been knocked down, and the li that's where the library is? That, that's yeah, that big park. now it's just a nice park. big open area, yeah. easy to see. <laughs> As you're up at the top of the hill, you can see everything down there now. And to say at 10,000 foot, the point of this is to have, get cars off the causeway, right? It's to get people to park their cars in clear water and take the bus to the beach. And then, and then coming back, fairly similar. Whoops, just hit the wrong button. I'm looking for the laser. As it moves in, uh, it'll come through. It'll hit those parking lots before it goes back to Park Street Terminal, which is important because we did have some sitting at Park Street Terminal last year waiting. Uh, for a short break, and then it would go by them. I and we had a lot of people get off and walk. I did too. Uh, but it, it should work. It should work pretty well this year. We're uh, pretty excited that we have the extra parking about it. Um, so all told, on the weekends we will have the Jolly Trolley. They've got their South Beach route, their North Coastal route. We'll have the Sun Coast Beach Trolley and our extra buses running back and forth between the parking rides and out to the beach. And that should be a little faster than every 15 minutes. Out at the beach, three stops. Uh, the two primary ones will be, most people now be getting off at Pier 60. <coughs> most of them will come there. Uh, a few of them may get off at our current beach transit center, which is also where you can travel to the, or transfer to the North Beach Jolly Trolley. That's the one that goes up north. And then the primary return area, and some of you were there with us last year, uh, is at the marina and uh, I know uh, who else was there Ed, you were there yeah anybody else that gets busy but it's fun because mm -hmm. this is the one venue where I've been out for several years where people are really happy sure I mean, they're, they are they're, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty great <laughs> yes <laughs> so it, it is it's rewarding to be out there and we'll yeah. we'll be uh, sending out a, a sign-up genius for volunteers because we'll have a few spots out there uh, this year, we're just going to ask them a few basic questions as far as a survey, nothing difficult, just want to know where they're from and, that's, and how they heard about it. That's basically what we'll be doing and then directing them because when you're at that marina stop, as I <laughs> can tell you, there's the Jolly Trolley, our shuttles, the South Beach Trolley. You want to make sure everybody gets on the right one, especially if they have to go to Dunedin. You, don't, you want to make sure they're going uh, northbound on the right one. Yeah, on the, uh, the beach trolley, only goes one side one way and the other <coughs> side the other way. So if they want to get one way, you got to send them across the yes. street, which took me a little bit to realize that. It's like, wait a minute, that's only, yeah. It does, you have to go the whole route around to get there from here and the other way, yeah. And that, it's, it's a little more intimidating at the marina stop than it is out at Pier 60. And these are the two areas we'll have uh, volunteers from about 3 to midnight. Friday and Saturday, and then 3 to 10 on Sunday. So if you're out here, this is pretty easy. You're, you're basically sending them either the South Beach route or the Sun Coast Beach trolley. They'll have a special shuttle pick them up, or you just send them back over to the marina. So uh, if you want, if you're a little nervous about volunteering, then this is a good spot for you. It's nice and easy. And now moving on to the service in Dunedin. For the last several years, the, sun, or the Jolly Trolley North route, we've uh, detoured in off of Edgewater, and there are no stops in here, so we're not missing any stops, along Union and then Douglas, because this is where the Blue Jays play right there. So starting from their first game, which is February 24th, through their last game, March 24th, uh, 21st that is, we'll have this detour running, small detour running up uh, in Dunedin. And then the Jolly Trolley also runs a park and ride uh, up there from Skinner, about an hour before the game starts, it begins, and it goes back and forth between uh, the stadium, the stop at the stadium, and this parking lot at Skinner. That, that's their new big 
$100 million stadium. What's up there at Skinner in Milwaukee? Is that a school or a church or? I, I, nothing yet. Is that Asian still the months. blank? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. They've been threatening to build on it for years. So We're goodness, happy they because we get to use it. <laughs> yes. So I live, if I live in Tarpon, I can, once they have that, uh, that Blue Jay Stadium is in completion, I can go from Tarpon all the way to uh, watch the Blue Jays. On the, yeah. yeah. The trolley. You sure can. You go right by it on that, on that same route. So it starts the 20, what did I say, the 24th? Yeah, February 24th. Any, any other questions? No. All right, wonderful. thank you. Yeah, so, yeah. Where people know about it, that like the, the people that are going to the ball games and yes. you know, at the stadium. No, actually, we're going to keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying, how are they yes. promoting it? Center there, we have in, I've heard of it, there are signs, and we've got banners. Okay. The Blue Jays actually help us promote it as well. Yeah. And this year, uh, Clearwater, the city of Clearwater for the Clearwater Spring Break has worked with us and we'll have more signage than we've ever had before for people coming in all directions saying that you can park and ride free over here. I'm really excited about it. We should put up some really good numbers this year. I mean, we did put up num great numbers last year, but I think we'll beat it. Yeah, it's to their advantage to keep people off the causeway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Every car they can keep off that causeway. That's, That's the idea. Right. And that means the buses don't get stopped on there for, right. for traffic, yeah, the which really yeah. last yeah. Right. was bad. Yeah, it's <laughs> yep. Thanks, Bob. All right, thank you. I hope to see you out there. We'll be there. Mm -hmm. Send us an email. Oh, there you go. All right. All right. Hello again, everyone. I am back. Uh, <laughs> And I'm here with a couple of others, uh, folks, co-workers at PSTA, and they'll introduce themselves when we get to it. I, in respect of everyone's time, I just want to keep this rolling. So we're here to talk today about uh, PSTA sustainability and how we are working with you, the rider, to do more. Um, so really, we just look at sustainability as a way for PSTA, PSTA to be responsible decision makers. How are we able to meet the needs of today without compromising our ability to meet the needs? our needs of the future. We're looking at it in terms of the environmental impacts, economic, and social impacts. PSTA is a member of the American Public Transportation's sustainability commitment. So as a network of transit agencies, and we are committed to being a more sustainable PSTA. So whether that's electric bus purchases, whether that's thinking about ways to reuse our water, we're committed to working towards a more sustainable PSTA. This past summer in 2019, we became silver <coughs> level uh, signatories. We achieved silver level. Um, so we went from entry level bronze to silver, and there's still a long way to go for us to get to gold. But that is really our goal for fiscal year 2020 or end of year 2020 is to get halfway to gold um, because that requires so much more initiative from PSTA um, around our um, maintenance, around our um, vehicle usage and then thinking about even things like infrastructure like can we get solar so we're thinking about all of those things and we're working towards getting to gold do i have time this is a quick video okay oh oh is there a sound there is no sound oh there's the sound we're so honored to receive the Silver Sandalia Award. PSTA does have 89 hybrid electric vehicles in our fleet. That's the largest fleet of hybrid in the state of Florida. We also have two electric buses with four more on the way. In total, we're saving more than a half a million gallons of diesel fuel each and every year that benefits our community. We're one of only 20 transit systems to have received this level of sustainability. And why is that? More hybrid electric buses for our customers, for reducing water usage, for reducing electric uses, and paper uses at our offices. It's a comprehensive look at all ways we can be more sustainable for our community. It sends a powerful message and a powerful example of the types of everyday policies that we need to adopt in the future. Simply doing nothing is not an option for us in the world. So our board will continue to make decisions that value sustainability because it's what's good for the community in the long run. Well, let's not forget, too, that 
you know, the more people that we have on buses are the fewer cars on the street. So we're doing a lot just by increasing the ridership. I do feel proud of PFPA's effort because over and over and over again, we show ways in which we are being innovative and creative to provide public transportation options for our citizens. And it's, to me, an investment in our future generations for our kids and for our grandchildren. One of the most unsustainable things that we all do is drive in our personal cars alone. And what PSDA is best at doing is providing an alternative to driving alone in <coughs> And what public transportation, what PSDA does best for Pinellas County is give people an option so that our community can be more sustainable. Thanks, Brad. Um, so that is... Um, Brad highlighted a lot of the reasons why we became silver level. So we're working towards gold now. That requires us to achieve more short-term and long-term goals and do more to meet our reduction targets. Reduce waste, reduce energy consumption, reduce water. Um, and so we need both internal support, so support from all the PSTA departments. We're working on creating a sustainability plan. We're working on getting all the departments together to work towards um, getting ourselves to gold, but we also need external support. And that is where our two presenters come in. So I'll let you take it away. Very good afternoon. My name is Gabrielle Donaldson, and this is Tom Hayup. We are two members of the Community Support Performance Innovation Team. Our other members are Kim Leggett, who's present, and we also have Barbara Irizarry and Jacob Labutka, who could not make it here today. So today we're going to talk about our pilot program that we have at the Levi for recycling. Um, so our recycling program has been going on for about three months at the Levi. So right now we're going to have Tom talk about it so he can tell you how it got started. Thank you, Gabby. Again, my name is Tom Hype. I'm one of the transportation supervisors here at PSTA. Um, in keeping with the sustainability initiative that our focus group took on for 2019 um, and getting the ridership involvement, that was key, and that involves all of you as well. Um, we started with this initiative. We basically launched it on Earth Day 2019 at Central Plaza where we had a group of volunteers from PSTA go down, introduce Wally the water bottle with the do's and don'ts of recycling with recycling containers, explaining to people, and making sure there was an interest and involvement. And surprisingly, we got a lot of people that re responded that they were, in fact, in tune with the recycling, in tune with the, the challenges that we're facing here in Pinellas County with recycling issues. Um, with that, we ultimately fast forwarded to the fall out here at the lay-by on um, the PSTA lay-by which many of you are involved with that is basically ground zero for the sustainability initiative for the recycling program on a weekly basis we are emptying the recycling cans bringing them here into the PSTA facility and actually going through and separating the recycling from the trash <coughs> and then taking the recycling and putting them in the appropriate containers. This is literally being done in-house with volunteers at PSTA. Um, we want to continue this project. Um, it is very far-reaching. It is very long-term. Eventually, we would have all these recycling containers at all of our PSTA terminals. We would have a third-party vendor who does nothing but collect and responsibly take care of the recycling throughout Pinellas County. So with that, uh, do you have any questions? And I thank you for your time and your support. I just want to make sure that you all know that, that um, Gabby and Tom um, mentioned it quickly, our innovation teams um, at PSTA. So we have um, volunteers who have taken on different aspects of the agency um, and I, we just wanted to highlight that, that they've been very they've been very active in some of the programs that are coming out of our in innovation team are just like this. Those so. are like initiatives like the kind yes. of things because I yes. was thinking that we should have probably known about this in advance. We should have considered that as one of our initiatives to tie in with the with well the, you can certainly do that now that you're as you're part of our ambassador. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's I uh, yeah that's 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I know we're running late. Uh, this is where we would normally do member comments. Brian, did you want to? Okay, we'll, we'll do it next month. Um, and if, if there's nothing drastically important, let's save it uh, then. And um, yours again. Yeah, uh, driver Appreciation Day, oh, March please. 18. Uh, you'll have a meeting, I think, the Tuesday before this. Um, but just so you know that it's coming, you'll see these on the, on the buses. And um, we hope that you'll you find some of our operators some good stories about some of our excellent operators and share them with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, sure, we know. Yeah, yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also. Yes, so, yes, you'll have more. <laughs> Please, guys. Right. All right. So, yeah, let's do that as part of our being good advocates. And they also, you all have a pat, an empty track star to fill it out. Keep looking, ask your friends to look. Who and anyone in this town, get more flies with honey than vinegar, is doing anything to help uh, good people on the bus, anything. And let's nominate them. Curb cuts, safety, access, anything. Uh, with all of that, can we call for adjournment? Yes. We're just going to meeting adjourned. Yeah, but it was a long one.